Vishesha loka provesha nidrachari uto jiva Vibhavari Shesha Haloka Provesha Nidra Chari Ocho Jiva Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Griva Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Griva Nasimhavamana Shima Jutudana Rajendra Nandana Shama Narsim Havamana Srimadhana Rajendra Nandana Shama Putana Katana Kaita Bashatana Jaya Das Prati Rahama Putana Gatana Kaita Bashatana Jaya Das Prati Rahama Yashoda Dula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandara Yashoda Dula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandhara Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bhora Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bhora Ravana Thakura Makana Tashkara Gopi Jana Vashra Hari Ravana Thakura Makana Tashkara 
गोपे जना वस्त्र हरे राजा गोपा वृंदापाल चिता हरे वंशी जे राकल गोपा वृंदापाल चिता हरे वंशी हरे योगेन्द्र वंदना श्रीनंद नंदना भया योगेन्द्र वंदना श्रीनंद नंदना ज जना बाया ना बिने राधा रूपा मनोहर मोहन बम से राधा रूपा मनोहर मोहन बम से यशोरनंदना थम सा निको जरा विलास यशोरनंदना खम सा निखुन जरा सावी राजा परायन
कंजना गंगा चिता बिना जंगा समस्त गोन गंगा यमुना जीवना के ले थरायना मनसा चंद्र चतोहरा यमुना जीवना के ले थरायना मनसा चंद्र प्रेमानंदे हरि बो ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भागवते वसुदेवाया 
Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudhirayat Nasta Prayeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 25, entitled The Description of the Characteristics of King Puranja. Text number 4. Shreyas Shreyas Twam Katamad Rajan Karman Atmana Ihase Dukha Hani Sukhavapti Shreyas Tan Neha Shashyate Shreyas Twam Katma Madrajan Shreyas Twam Katamadrajan Karma Atmana Ihahase Karma Atmana Iha Ase Dukahani Sukhavapti Dukahani Sukhavapti Shreyas Tanne Hachashyate Shreyas Tanne Hachashyate Shreyas Twam Katamadrajan Karma Atmana Ihase Dukahani Sukhavapti Shreyas Tanneha Chesyate Shreyas Twam Katamadrajan Karmatmana Ihase Dukahani Sukhavapti Shreyas Tanne Hachasyate Shreya 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 Shreya
Okay, very good. Shreya, Shreya. ultimate benediction. Twam, you, katamat, what is not, what is that? Rajan, O King, Karmana, by fruit of activities. Atmana of the soul. Ihase you desire. Dukahani disappearance of all distresses. Sukha avapti attainment of all happiness. Shreya, benediction, tat, that, na, never, iha, in this connection, cha, and ishyate is available. Translation. Narada Muni asked King Prachini Bharishat, My dear King, what do you desire to achieve by performing these fruitive activities? The chief aim of life is to get rid of all miseries and enjoy happiness. But these two things cannot be realized by fruitive activity. Ninjongman. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. In this material world, there is a great illusion which covers real intelligence. A man in the mode of passion wants to work very hard to derive some benefit, but he does not know that time will never allow him to enjoy anything permanently. Compared with the work one expends, the gain is not so profitable. Even if it is profitable, it is not without its distresses. If a man is not born rich and he wants to purchase a house, cars and other material things, then he has to work hard day and night for many years in order to possess them. Thus, Happiness is not attained without undergoing some distress. 
actually pure happiness cannot be had within this material world. If we wish to enjoy something, we must suffer for something else. On the whole, suffering is the nature of this material world. And whatever enjoyment we are trying to achieve is simply illusion. After all, we have to suffer the miseries of birth, old age, disease and death. We may discover many fine medicines, but it is not possible to stop the sufferings of disease or death. Actually, medicine is not the counteracting agent for either disease or death. On the whole, there is no happiness in this material world. But an illusion person works very hard for so-called happiness. Indeed, this process of working hard is actually taken for happiness. This is called illusion. Therefore, Narada Muni asked King Prachini Bharishat what he desired to attain by performing so many costly sacrifices. Even if one attains a heavenly planet, he cannot avoid the distresses of birth old age, disease and death. Someone may argue that even devotees have to undergo many distresses in executing austerities and penances connected with devotional service. Of course, for the neophytes, the routine of devotional service may be very painful, but at least they have the hope that they will ultimately be able to avoid all kinds of distress and achieve the highest perfectional stage of happiness. For the common karmis there is no such hope because even if they are promoted to the higher planetary system, they are not guaranteed freedom from the miseries of birth, old age, disease and death. Even Lord Brahma who is situated in the Vaishna, who is sit, even Lord Brahma who is situated in the highest planetary system Brahma Loka has to die. Lord Brahma's birth and death may be different from an ordinary man's, but within this material world he cannot avoid the distresses of birth, old age, disease and death. If one is at all serious about attaining liberation, from these miseries. He must take to devotional service. This is confirmed by the Lord Himself in Bhagavad Gita. Janma karma chame devyam evam yoveti takvataha takvadeham puner janma naiti mamiti so arjuna. One who knows the transcendental nature of my appearance and activities does not upon leaving the body take his birth again in the material world, but attains his eternal abode, O Arjuna. Thus, after attaining full Krishna consciousness, the devotee does not return to this material world after death. He goes back, he goes back home, back to Godhead. That is the perf perfect stage of happiness 
unblemished by any trace of distress. Om Magyana Timarandasya Ghananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanina Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha your, your, uh, Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadigor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare so Narada Muni had come to the palace of King Prachini Barishat to instruct him because King Prachini Barishat had been engaging in many kinds of karma kandi activities. He'd been doing fruitive activities. He was pious but he was misdirected. He had not had association with devotees and he only knew about performing karma kanda activities. Just like many people in Penang, they only know about karma kandi activities. They go to temple, they break the coconut, they ring the bell, they don't know what is the higher purpose behind these things. So they have some piety but they don't know about bhakti, about devotional service. They may be doing these rituals just like Narada Muni said, Narada Muni told the king, he said, the chief aim of life is to get rid of all misery, right? We all want to get rid of all misery and to enjoy happiness. We want that also. So we're very happy, we'd be very happy to get these two things, to get rid of all misery and enjoy happiness. Oh. But Narada Muni said, these two things cannot be realized and you cannot attain them, you cannot get them just by fruitive activity. In other words, just by doing these karma kandi activities, you're not going to get rid of all miseries and you won't enjoy happiness for very long. You'll get happiness for some time but that happiness is described to be like flickering happiness. And there's a song we sing, it said, Chapala Sukha, flickering happiness. Sukha is happiness and Chapala means it's flickering, it's not steady. So your happiness is very short, very brief. So that, we don't want that kind of happiness, we want eternal happiness and we want to get rid of all miseries. In the nectar of devotion, if you've studied nectar of devotion, we hear about different stages of sin. There are different seeds of sinful reaction. The sinful reactions cause of our suffering and we get, we have sinful reactions. Some of the sins are mature, we're suffering from them now. Different things in our body or in our mind, they're the results of our past sin. Maybe we're, we have, don't, we don't have any money, maybe we have bad health, maybe we didn't get education, maybe we're not born in the great family, like that. These are all different kinds of reactions from the past activities. So some of them are manifest, that's called 
parabdha karma. You can see it. You, know, you can see a set person suffering or you can see a person they're enjoying, they have very good karma. One of my god brothers uh, <laughs> is a very nice devotee. I, I told him one time, I said, I, you've got such good karma. He said, yeah, I know. He said, I, <laughs> it's my for, good fortune, I'm lucky. <laughs> he has money, he has a very nice wife, he's a very good lady, she takes care of him nicely and she doesn't complain a lot, you know. And he lives very happily in Krishna consciousness. So I said, you must have good karma. He said, yeah, I think so. Hmm. Not everybody has that kind of karma. So we, we would like to get rid of all of our miseries. How do we get rid of our miseries? Well, devotional service can destroy the karma. Karma, just doing karma candy activities, fruitive activities, it's not going to change the karma forever. It will get rid of some of the karma. Just like maybe the, pe the, the one man, in, he had the shop, he was doing business and when the business is slow, there's no customers, He'll send the shop assistant, he'll tell the assistant, go to the market, put some fish back in the sea. Right? Put the fish back in the sea. That's a pious activity, you see. He was hoping that will bring some customers. Or go to the market, get the birds, let the birds go free. That's another pious activity. Chinese people like to do these kind of things. Not only Chinese, a lot of other people also try to do pious activity. They want to do pious activities to get rid of suffering and to bring them happiness. So pious activities will help for some time but not for forever. You get some happiness you get relief from some suffering, but there's more suffering coming. You get rid of some of the suffering, some of the bad karma, but then more of it comes because we have a lot of karma from many lifetimes and it's all coming gradually, it comes. Some of it comes very quickly and some of it comes very slowly. It's very complex thing. The, but the karma is causing us happiness and distress. Somebody's got good karma, they get some happiness. And somebody's karma is not so good, you get more distress. So how to end that karma? Only devotional service can destroy all of the karma, all of the different stages of karma. There's parabdha karma, the karma we're suffering from at present, and there's aparabdha karma. It's not yet come, but it's going to come. And there's also a stage called bija, the seed of activities. And then the other stage, what's the other stage? There's bija and kuta. Kuta, so kuta, bija, Parabdha and Aparabdha, four different stages of karma. So you do pious activities and pious activities will help you to get rid of some of the karma. But only devotional service can remove all of the stages of karma. And this is stated in the Brahma Samhita. Yasvendra gopam atavendra aho karma bandhan rupa palapajanam apanoti karmani nirdahati kintu chabakti bhajam govindam adipursam tamaham bhajami. Lord Brahma describes 
that I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, uh, who burns up to the roots all fruitive activities of those who are imbued with devotion and impartially ordains for each person the due enjoyment of the results of their previous activities. No less than the tiniest germ that bears the name Indra Gopa and Indra, the king of heaven. So even the demigods, they're all suffering and enjoying karma. And tiny insects, they're also having their karma. Every living entity, the, the body they have, the condition which they're in, it is not by chance. It is all due to karma. But that karma is not eternal and karma can all be changed. It can be changed by devotional service. Devotion to Govinda burns up all the karma. Just like uh, a fire, a little spark can ignite a big ocean of petrol. You may have a big ocean of fuel and if there's a little spark then the whole thing will go on fire, it will all burn to ashes. So all of the sinful reactions which we are carrying, as well as the good reactions, they can all be removed by devotional service. Why would we want to remove the good reactions? Because the good reactions will keep you in the material world. If you will just simply enjoy the good reactions, you'll have to stay in the material world and in the course of staying in the material world you may do again more sins. In other words you get more karma. Some may be good but some may be bad. With every activity there you may be doing some good thing but you can do something wrong. In the Krishna book, if you read the Krishna book there's a very interesting story about one king, Nriga. And he was a very, a very wealthy king and very pious. And he was doing a lot of charity. Now charity, I remember, that's one of the, that's one of the pious activities. So this king was giving cows in charity. And these cows were not dry cows. These cows were giving milk and they had only had one calf and the calf was young and they were giving lots of milk. And the cows were all decorated, their hoofs were all gold plated and their horns were also gold plated and he put pearl necklaces around them and they were, and they were so nice, best cows, you know, and he would give these cows to brahmanas because when you give to the brahmana, that's the best charity. If you give to a sinful person, that's not good charity. You give, if you give money to a sinful person, they'll go and do more sin and you will get the karma also because you gave them money. But if you give money to a brahmana, a person who is a real brahmana, he will use that money for the service of the Supreme Lord. So that's beneficial for us. So this king, Nriga, he would find brahmanas who were poor but who were well educated in the scriptures. And they were very, very strict brahmanas and he would give them these cows in charity. Now, that's the highest charity to do like that. So he was giving regularly, he was giving many, many cows and he would find all these brahmanas, the most qualified brahmanas to come and take charity. 
But one day it happened that when he was giving one Brahmana cows, one cow wandered to another group of cows and he gave the same cow away to another Brahmana. So the two Brahmanas, they, they found out, they said, hey, the king gave this cow to me. And the other Brahmana said, no, he gave it to me. So the king had given the same cow in charity to two different Brahmanas. And the two Brahmanas came to see the king and they said to him, look, what kind of charity is this? You gave me these cows and this cow was also given to this other Brahmana. So the king said, oh, I'm very sorry, it was a mistake. He said, I will give you each 10,000 more cows. And both the Brahmanas said, no, we don't want more cows. We want the cows which you had given. We want that cow which you gave us in the beginning. The Brahmanas, these two Brahmanas, they had made a vow that they would only take charity one time. So when the king wanted to give more cows, they said, no, we don't want more cows. We're not taking any more cows. That cow, we want the cow you gave me in the beginning. So the king, what could he do? He could not satisfy the two brahmanas. And the two brahmanas left. They were not pleased with the king because he had given the same cow to each of them. So this was an offense on the part of the king. He didn't mean it, it was unintentional, but he had to suffer the reactions for that. It is like taking something from a brahmana, that is very sinful. To steal from a brahmana is very sinful. You get punished for that. So he had actually taken the cow by mistake and had gone to another brahmana. So, when he gave up his body, the king had to suffer for the reaction of stealing from a brahmana. And for that punishment, he had to take the body of a lizard in a well. He took the body of a big lizard in the bottom of a well. And he remained in that body for some time. So, this is told in Srimad Bhagavatam, it's an instruction to all of us to understand how careful you have to be in dealing with brahmanas and never take another person's property, never steal anything from them. And we're also warned about how easy it is when you try to do some kind of karma kanda activity, some kind of fruit of activity, it can easily go wrong. And when it goes wrong, then you get the reaction. So how careful we have to be and we're encouraged, we should not want to do these kind of activities. The king had made a great mistake that he was doing this charity because he was thinking, I will enjoy in the future, my next life, I will enjoy more. He was already enjoying as a king, but he was planning for his next life, that I will enjoy more because I'm giving charity. So it will come back many times. You see, you give charity to a to a brahmana, it will come back many, many times. You give charity to an ordinary person, it will come back the same amount. But when you give charity to a person who is a very good devotee, very advanced, like a brahmana who is a strict brahmana, then the benefit is very great. It will come back many times. So the king was thinking like that. He was thinking 
He was planning to enjoy material life. But a little mistake and he got so much trouble. So it's a warning that we should not be tempted to do these kind of things because it's very risky. You make a little mistake, maybe you chant the mantra wrong, a little mistake in the mantra and it all goes wrong. Just like in Srimad Bhagavatam, there was one king doing a yajna. He wanted to produce a demon but it, <laughs> he got the mantra wrong and the result was the person who took birth was actually a devotee in a demon body. So we have, you have to be very careful. But if you do devotional activities then there's no problem. Even you get the mantras wrong, even you make some mistake but if you have devotion and if our purpose is to please Krishna, that is what counts. Just like Vidura, Lord Krishna was coming to Vidura's house and Vidura got so excited, you know he didn't have much, he was a poor person. He got some bananas and he got so excited that he threw the bananas away and he offered the banana skins to Krishna. By mistake he offered the banana skin to Krishna but Krishna thought, Vidura is my devotee, he offered with love. Krishna accepted. He didn't think, what is this, you give me some bananas. No, he thought, he's my devotee, he's offering to me. So that, that is the nature of devotional service. Even you make some mistake but the Lord doesn't mind because your devotion is what counts. And there's another example, uh, the, the, in the Ramayana it tells about this one lady, she was selling fruit. She had this little, these fruits which she would sell. and. She was told, if you wait here, one day Lord Rama will come and you can offer your fruit to Lord Rama. So this lady, what's her name again? Huh? Shabari. Shabari. Yes, Shabari. Shabari and she was a young lady when she got told this and she thought, oh, Lord, the Lord will come and I can offer my fruit to him. So she thought, I, she waited there and she waited there for many, many years and she became an old lady and she was still waiting and Lord Rama came there. And when Lord Rama came, she had these fruits and she wanted to offer to Lord Rama. She took a little bite out of it to see if it was sweet or not. She said, this is a good one, take this one Lord. And, you know she'd taken a bite from it first but because she was devotee, Lord Rama was happy to take from her. Of course you should not taste it first but she wanted to give something, some that the fruit should be sweet. So she tasted it first and she said, yeah this is a good one, take this one. So that, that was her devotion. Lord Rama saw her devotion, even though there's some fault in the service. So this is the difference between devotional service and karma kandi or fruitive, fruitive activities. Okay, any question? Currently, acting karma and uh, accumulated and uh, future acting karma. So, how will they differentiate the karma? How they act in karma and how it, the karma will act in the future? 
What? I'm not understanding. No, there, there are two karmas, all the four type of karma. Yeah. There's one is acting in the current, yes. which we are suffering at the moment. Yes. And there's a karma in the future, yes. accumulated one. Right. How it reacts to the Maharaja? How the karma acts in the present and how it acts in the future? Well, the karma... The Parabdha karma is a karma which we have at present. That karma, that is visible, we, we are experiencing it, you know? Like, you have no money, you know, it's our karma, you could say, you know? Or we're sick, it's, a, it's another karma, you know, it's some problem. The problems which we have, that's our karma. We're experiencing at the present. And the, and the, but there's other karma which is waiting to come. Prabhupada gives the example, just like a man may be a criminal and the police are hunting for him. <laughs> so he's always worried, when is the policeman going to come to capture him, to arrest him? To if he sees a policeman, he'll run away. Even the policeman may not be looking for him. But he just sees a policeman and says, oh, there's a policeman, oh, and he'll go and hide. And so in the same way, we have karma waiting to come on us, you know, the karma which is not yet manifest. It may be in different stages, it may not, it, at some point it's going to come on us. So it's waiting to come on us. So it's not, we, you know, we. We don't actually experience it yet, but it's there, we're carrying it. But the parabdha karma, that's what we're suffering from at present. You know, somebody's blind or somebody's a cripple or whatever, this is reactions, this is the karma. So that's manifest. But the aparabdha karma, that's waiting to come, it's going to come in the future. When it will come, you don't know. But if you do devotional service, then all the different stages of karma can be removed. So you may say, well, devotees still suffer. Why do devotees still suffer if they have if they're doing devotional service, then we should understand that the suffering of the devotee is not really karma, it's the arrangement of Krishna. The Krishna will put the devotee into different conditions just for their purification, to help them to surrender more fully to Krishna. Krishna will put the devotee into different conditions. Just like the Pandavas, why did they suffer? They were great devotees, they were always absorbed in Krishna. Why did they suffer so much? Lord Krishna wanted to show how great they were, that even in their difficulties they never gave up Krishna. They remain very faithful and strong in Krishna consciousness. So Lord Krishna likes to show the character of his devotees. And he will put and sometimes a devotee may have some attachment which is not good for their devotional service. Lord Krishna will let them suffer a bit. To, to get, to give up that attachment. And Prabhupada even said, Lord Krishna took away his wealth. He had some business, he had some money and he was thinking he would do business and make money, but Krishna took it away. Not only did he take the business away, but he took away his family. The family, when he had no money, then the family didn't respect him anymore. And so, so Prabhupada thought, 
no need to be in the family anymore. So he left the home. But he said, he quoted the verse, Hari Shetadanam Shanai. Lord Krishna said, when I am very merciful to someone, then I take away all of their attachments so that they can fully surrender and take shelter. Krishna's special mercy when he takes everything away from us. Okay. Uh, yes, Manaji. Uh, if someone to the highest activity, then he up up uh, to the higher 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 plan. If he will he uh, up to the higher plan, this is uh, mean a uh, waste of his uh, life. karma. Yeah, because she's asking about karma, about what is the effects of good karma. If she does good karma, you do good karma, then? Then, yeah, you maybe, maybe you can go to higher planet. It's, it said if you die in the mode of goodness, then you go to higher planet. You want to go to higher planet, you have to die in the mode of goodness. Now if you die drunk, that's not the mode of goodness. If you die from drugs, that's not the mode of goodness. <laughs> to die in the mode of goodness means you have to be situated in the mode of goodness. You have to be pure, you have to be with some knowledge, and you have to be free of a lot of desires, and ambitions which people in the mode of passion have, and you have to be without sinful activities. Sinful reactions, if we have a lot of sinful reactions, we won't be going to the higher planet. Sinful reactions will cause us to take birth. Maybe we'll go to Yamaraj, right? You go to Yamalok and you, he will, you know, you can be punished there. They have different hells for all the sins which people do. And then after that, then you get an animal body or a, you know, a tree body. You don't get to higher planet. So it's a question of what kind of activities, how you've been living, what activities you've been doing. If we've been living in the mode of goodness, a pure life, then you may go, maybe you can go to higher planet. Yes, that's right. Yes. yes, we this is the place where we get karma. This planet is where we're getting karma. And the karma can take you to higher planets or may take you down to lower planets. Bad karma will take you down, the good karma will take you up. So you go up to the higher planets and then you use up your karma. 
And when your good karma is finished, you'll come back. In the same way you go down, you have bad karma, you go down, you suffer and you get your reactions and after your reactions are gradually you come back up, you get a higher body, come back to the human life. The animal body is still reactions, animals are not getting any karma, trees are not getting any karma, that body is the karma. But in the human life, this is, the pl this is where you get the karma, you're earning the karma now, right? Well, if they have human body, then they all get karma. It's in the human form of life. How, how, to, how to help old people to have more faith in religion so that they can have a better life in the future? Well, <laughs> it's up to them. You know, we, we try, we give Krishna consciousness to everyone. We don't just only think of old people. Actually, it's very difficult for old people to take up Krishna consciousness. Because, you know, just like if, if they were to try to be educated, people, old people cannot, maybe they can't read, you, you're going to teach them to read, you know, it's difficult, they're old. We have a saying in English, they say, you cannot teach an old dog new tricks. Mm -hmm. So, Prahlad Maharaj said, Komar Acharit Pragno Dharmam Bhagavatam. From the beginning of life, you should learn Krishna consciousness. Of course, some people at the end of life, they also became Krishna conscious. There are examples like Ajamila, at the end of life, he became very serious about Krishna consciousness. So, we don't mind, old people can also try, we, we encourage them, you know, if they like to read books, of course, old people will say, oh, yenjin <laughs> dofala, they cannot see properly, difficult for them to read. You can read to them, you want to, if they're interested, you know, you can read to them and see how much attention they pay, if they're interested to hear. We do have in China, Mohammed Yoniga, Laoni and Dashia, Right? We have the Old People's University. We have a special training program for old people because we do have quite a few old people. And we have a special classes for them to teach them and try to help them become Krishna conscious. We had some ladies, I, you know, I had contact with some old ladies and I put them in touch with the old people's, with the Old People's University and they, they're, they've been attending the classes online and it's been very good for them. 
they appreciate. So we try, you know, but we try to give Krishna consciousness to anyone, whoever wants it, then we're willing to give them. We don't always find the only old, we're not going to just focus only old people, you know. We're more interested in young people because young people, Prabhupada said, when they're young that is the time for education. In Srila Prabhupada's time all the devotees were young and, and the reporters were puzzled that why is it Swamiji, all your followers are young? And Prabhupada told them, he said, because that is the time for education. You know, in China you don't have, you know, we have Launi and Dasha, Mayo Beda Launi and Dasha, Jiyo, Hare Krishna, Waman Yoja. No other place teaches the old people, we are trying to teach them. Okay. Let them hear. Let play the music, let them hear the kirtan, let them hear the recordings. Well, it's up to them. How receptive are they? How they hear? Do they hear with a submissive? Are they submissive? Do they want to improve themselves? You know, we're trying, we try, but do they want? Are they willing to try themselves? If they're willing to hear carefully, you know, if they just hear, then they can benefit them. If they hear again and again, they hear, then one day they'll also start Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> Did this benefit? Does it benefit the dog? Yes. Yes? Oh. Yes, well, they can get a human life in the future. Okay. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. One more question from the Oh, yeah? Who is that? To Krishna Bhukha and the Srimad Bhagavatam 10 for 10, is there any difference? Well, yeah, and there's a difference. And uh, in the Sastra said we, we should not uh, read the canto 10 in, uh, directly. So when we uh, introduce to the new people the Krishna book is uh, properly? Yes, Krishna book is okay. Krishna book is okay. Prabhupada wrote the Krishna book for people in all levels of society. Even people who are not devotees, they will be benefited. In the Krishna book, all kinds of nice pastimes are described there. And uh, then she asked, the Jamsami is coming. Uh,有关于Krishna的消息光都在第十天里,我们诵读这些译文音频资料从第一天开始读的,包括第十天,分享给奉献者,可能有的奉献者没有读前面九章,这样做恰当吗?Oh, you can read Krishna book to them.你可以给他读Krishna book. is Prabhupada. Krishna book is Prabhupada's own writing. The tenth canto Srimad Bhagavatam, the first three volumes are Prabhupada, but the other volumes are all done by Prabhupada's disciples. 
我们可以给他补一次的助长，顺便不要在前面三分是这个动画化的，写后面的其他一些字，呃，文字。Prabhupada left the body after finishing the pastime of Lord Brahma stealing away the cows. That was the last Prabhupada wrote. So, yeah. but it, it's it's not strictly followed that you have to read the first nine cantos, you know. It's certainly better if you've read the first nine cantos, but it's not an absolute rule that you cannot read the tenth canto without first reading the first nine. The main thing you want to avoid, you don't want to be hearing too much about the gopis, Krishna's pastimes with the gopis. There's a, a, those chapters about Rasa Leela. Mm. But the other past mm. Okay. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki